Hello, it's time for Weekend File, reaching you live on the NTA Network Service. Thanks for joining us. From the moment the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Nigeria February this year, the federal government and relevant agencies initiated several health, economic, security and social responses to contain the disease and its impact on the society. One major response is the government-funded 500 billion naira COVID-19 crisis intervention fund and enhanced support to states for critical health care expenses. Responses to the outbreak required the involvement of multiple government institutions and development partners. Recall that at its early stage, after announcing total closure of the nation's airspace and land borders, the federal government provided a 10 billion naira COVID-19 grant to Lagos State as it had the country's highest number of confirmed cases. Another 5 billion naira special intervention fund was also made available to the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC, to aid in coordinating the surveillance of the disease and the public health responses nationwide. Furthermore, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development took up the responsibility of implementing palliative measures across the country, including the disbursement of four months grants of 20,000 naira to the poorest households in various states, donation of food items to state governments for onward distribution to citizens, and continuation of the school feeding program by giving more than 3 million households food items through the primary schools the children attend. The federal government equally constituted a presidential task force on COVID-19 with membership from various MDAs with the mandates of coordinating a multi-stakeholder response to the pandemic while providing technical and material support to states to manage the outbreak amongst other things. Meanwhile, at state levels, similar structures are in existence for proper, efficient and effective management of COVID-19. So far, the measures have proved highly productive even as concerned authorities continue to provide palliatives across boards. Indeed, Nigeria is alive to the demands of the time. Tonight on Weekend File, we will review the journey so far in order to ascertain the highs and lows on COVID-19 and the federal government's palliative measures. Our guest tonight is Technical Advisor to the Minister on Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Group Captain Sadiq Abubakar, retired. We also have detailed reports from the zones. My name is Kenen Imma Abodike. The news now. The high power ECOWAS delegation led by former President Goodluck Jonathan arrived in Mali earlier today, pushing for a speedy return to civilian rule after a military coup. The delegation held talks with Mali's military junta for about half an hour and is expected to also meet ousted President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, who has been detained by the junta at a military camp outside Bamako. The delegation plans to meet with all stakeholders with the hope that peace will be restored as soon as possible. The ECOWAS delegation arrived in Bamako just hours after four Malian soldiers were killed near the Burkina Faso border when an explosive device detonated as their vehicle passed by. Now, the recent launch of the Nigerian Gas Transportation Network code by President Muhammad Buhari is aimed at providing the right framework for the transportation of the gas from the source to the end user. Andy Daniels in this report takes a look at the significance of this project. That report will come later. For now, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on the Need to Relocate Tank Farms in Residential Areas wants the tank farm owners to comply strictly with the stipulated safety rules and regulations established by the relevant government agencies in their operations to ensure safety of lives and properties. Chairman of the committee, Sejus Ogun, stated this during an oversight function of the committee in Delta State. Agatha Eguare Ojo has the details. 
Ethiopia Committee on Investigation of Tank Farms in Residential Areas was constituted following a motion by a member representing Amuwa Odofin Federal Constituency in Lagos State, Ogene Emmanuel, on need to relocate tank farms in the residential areas of Ijegun, Kirikiri, and others. It is also saddled with the responsibility to investigate activities of the tank farms to ensure safety of lives and property in host communities. This is why the committee embarked on the visit to Ugara, Koko, and Wari in Delta State to get on the spot assessment of the areas in view. Chairman of the team, Segius Ogun, expressed concern on clustering of the tank farms, especially at residential areas, which he noted poses danger to lives and properties. We have drawn up a list of what they need to do, and the Federal Fire Service are with us. They have been here before and they are going to come back next week to make eye contact with some of those things. The committee inspected fire service facilities, total capacity of the tanks, medical facilities, jetties, as well as corporate social responsibility of tank farmers to the host communities. Meanwhile, the committee also met with some of the tank farmers in Ugara and Koko, including stakeholders in the petroleum sector, where the challenge of security in the area topped agenda. From Ugara in Delta State, Agatha Egwari Uju, NTA News. Now let's return to the our earlier story, which says that the recent launch of the Nigerian gas transportation network killed by President Mohamed Bugari is aimed at providing the right framework for the transportation of gas from the source to the end user. Andy Daniels in this report takes a look at the significance of this project. a country blessed with both human and natural resources, including oil and gas, has been grappling with the challenge of gas flaring for decades. Steps by previous administrations to eliminate the trend yielded little result. President Mohamed Buhari administration, aware of this, employed several steps, which has translated to the use of domestic gas by a significant percentage of Nigerians. Yes, we will not spend much like uh, the way we're supposed to spend in Kerezi. Not resting on its hours, the president recently launched the Nigerian Gas Transportation Network Code, NGTNC, designed to enhance the use of gas as a catalyst for national economic development. I like that project. It will give me an opportunity to make choice of my own, whom I patronize, and where do I get the products. The director, Department of Petroleum Resources, Saraki Awalu, says the project will go a long way in deepening economic development, improve gas supply, boost liquefied petroleum gas availability, and attract more investment opportunities in the nation's gas value chain. The optimal implementation uh, will promote and create fair and non-discriminatory tr transportation and uh, transparent and cost-reflective uh, tariffs. You see that without the code, the, the pricing is not right. You can't say where the price is, but this will create opportunity where the price will be optimal. The NGTNC project is part of the key reforms instituted by the present administration to expand gas to gas industry, gas to gas manufacturing, and mitigate the challenges associated with gas flaring in Nigeria. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. River State Governor Yeson Wike has decried the non-relocation of most international oil companies to the Niger Delta as a result of insecurity. The governor said of this when he played host to the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Tebepria Silver, at Government House, Port Harcourt. Ogedi Nyepore reports. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Timi Silva, was accompanied on the visit by the Board of Directors of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, and its Group Managing Director. They are in the state to ascertain the state of affairs at the Portacot Refinery, where rehabilitation work is about to commence. The Minister commended the River State Government's efforts in the area of security, noting that the state occupy a prominent place in the oil and gas sector. The petroleum product sector, subsector, has been deregulated. That means that that subsector has been enabled to function as it should. And in Port Harcourt, we have two refineries 
and a third refinery to be co-located within the same area, which means this is going to be a major center of refining in Nigeria. Governor Wike bemoans the excuses of insecurity always put up by the international oil companies for non-relocation of their head offices to the Niger Delta region, saying the region is safe for investment. Who are those causing the insecurity in Niger Delta? They begin to project as if there's so much insecurity in Niger Delta. It's not correct. Niger Delta is uh, safe. He taxed the NNPC to see to the rehabilitation of the road leading to East Facility. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwere, NTA News. A revenue generating agency is complying with regulations and remittances to the Fed region account will receive necessary legislative support for them to improve. On the other hand, those that fail in this regard will risk being taken off the national budget in the 2021 fiscal year. This was made known by the Joint Senate Committee on Finance and National Planning at the continuation of his public hearing on the 2021-2023 MTEF fiscal strategy paper. John Yaku has details. The Nigeria Customs Service on how to improve revenue in the coming years noted the challenges of the free trade agreement but hopes that the end of COVID-19 will improve imports while calling for review of import levies. I have found out from my colleagues, uh, customs heads, it's only in Nigeria that we allow Coca-Cola to produce and pay nothing. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council, on its part, advocated for shift from oil revenue to commodity exports to earn more foreign exchange for the country. Our only foreign exchange is from oil. So that's why we, we, we are susceptible to all these uh, challenges that oil, uh, oil, oil brings to us. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, the NMPC and the DG Budget Office agreed on a proposed $40 per barrel benchmark, 379 Naira to the dollar exchange rate and oil production rate of 1.7 million barrel per day in line with the OPEC production court. Draft 2021-2023 MTEF FSP has been prepared against the backdrop of a global recession and heightened global economic uncertainty. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, and Chairman of the Committee stressed the need to improve revenue to finance the country's budget deficit. The time has come for us as an administration to start to think of other sources and means of funding our infrastructure. If you are partly funded, you generate revenue which you spend and which is more than some of the budget aid contained in your budget document, you have to give it. Also at the hearing was the Director General of Nigerian Television Authority, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed. The digitization of MTA was supposed to have commenced even before the DSO was introduced. But like I said, out of the five necessities necessary to make MTA a partially commercialized enterprise, only one was put in place, and this is the situation to date. The Federal Inland Revenue Services was urged to deploy technology in the collection of stamp duties. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. In the meantime, the management of the NTA has described as false and malicious. A report making the rounds on the social media and some newspapers to the effect that the Senate committee had discovered a financial fraud running into billions of naira in the joint venture arrangement between the NTA and Star Times. In a sharp reaction, the management averred that neither the chairman of this committee, Senator Solomon Olamileko, nor any member alluded to fraud during the entire session. <laughs> Argentina joins Peru, Morocco and the United Arab Emirates in moving forward with clinical trials for a coronavirus vaccine developed by China as the World Health Organization updates its guidance to recommend children aged 12 and above wear face masks. Over now to Uche Ogachuku for global COVID-19 update. Head 
of the World Health Organization, Tedros Ghebreyesus, says the coronavirus pandemic could be over within the next two years. He compares the COVID-19 pandemic to the 1918 Spanish flu, which took two years to overcome. But a leading UK scientist warns the virus could remain with the world forever in some form or another. Meanwhile, WHO has updated its guidance to recommend children aged 12 and above wear face masks under the same conditions as adults, in particular when they cannot guarantee at least a one meter distance from others. Global tally on Wodometer dashboard as at 6.30 p.m. local time shows the world has recorded 805,628 deaths from the 23,247,528 positive cases. In another news, Argentina has joined Peru, Morocco and the United Arab Emirates in moving forward with clinical trials for a coronavirus vaccine developed by China National Biotech Group, CNBG. The CNBG is seeking research participants from other countries for testing as cases within China-owned borders dwindle. However, South Korea extends new restrictions nationwide in an attempt to control a resurgence of the virus. The country's health minister announced the measures on Saturday after officials reported 332 new confirmed cases. Data from the Africa Center for Disease Control indicates the continent's total confirmed infections has reached 1,173,000 431 and Nigeria accounts for 51,304 confirmed cases with 340 new cases reported from 18 states and the federal capital territory. That's the global coronavirus update. I am Uche Ugochukwu. of West African state ECOWAS as part of its humanitarian service to member states has donated about 4,000 tons of grains to the Nigerian government to cushion the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Yahana Hassan Barawu reports that the food items received by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs in Kando are to be distributed to the most vulnerable across the country. The establishment of the ECOWAS Regional Food Security Reserve in 2013 is aimed at complementing the efforts of member states to provide diversified rapid food and nutritional assistance. This is often actualized through the harmonized framework for identifying risk areas and vulnerability among member states. Nigeria qualified for the benevolence following recent vulnerability survey, which indicates that more than 7 million people are currently in difficult food situation, including internally displaced persons and children affected by malnutrition. It is therefore to cushion the hardship faced by this most vulnerable group that ECOWAS Commission deemed it fit to donate grants through its emergency fund with the support of European Union. The ECOWAS is... Um, uh continue this operation because it's very, very important for uh, our responsibility. Three ministers were on hand to receive the items on behalf of Nigerian government. This initiative clearly demonstrates <clears throat> the responsibility and support that the ECOWAS Commission has shown and continues to show for its citizens. Nigeria has taken notice of the kind gesture by ECOWAS. The rest assures that the 3,999 metric tons of cereals will be distributed to vulnerable. And so we're going to sit down, come up with a plan and a structure that's going to do this distribution. Other member states that have so far benefited from the regional security reserve are Burkina Faso, the republics of Niger and Mali. In Kano, Yohannes Asambaro, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has acknowledged the role of the media, humanitarian actors, as well as multilateral and bilateral partners as the ministry commemorates the first anniversary of its creation. The minister in a statement notes that it has been a very eventful, interesting and challenging year in which she learns to navigate the peculiar geography of humanitarian interventions, disaster management and social interventions to fulfill the ministry's mandate describing the president as visionary for creating the ministry which has been in the vanguard of battling the pandemic. Sadia Umar Farouk thanked the president for putting her in the driver's seats of the ministry and acknowledged that over the first one year in the saddle, she has gained new insights, learned valuable lessons and emerged with fresh perspectives regarding what works and what does not. Commending the role of the media, the minister described the fourth estate of the realm as both partner and ally, which remains an important stakeholder. The minister emphasized that she and her colleagues remain resolute and committed to fulfilling the mandate which has informed the theme of the anniversary, service to humanity. The minister extended special commendations to the humanitarian actors and other partners in the humanitarian sector, such as the UN agencies, as well as many other bilateral partners who will continue to provide humanitarian assistance despite security challenge and uh, at greater personal cost. She also acknowledged the sacrifice of those who lost their lives in one theater of conflict or the other during the period. The minister clarifies that the ministry's one-year anniversary compels her and her team to do more in the management of disasters, provision of humanitarian assistance, and the development of social safety nets which help build resilience for the future. Executive Secretary Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission and Chairman Northern Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Yakubu Pam, has called on parties to Southern Kaduna crisis to seek the swords and embrace dialogue. Achari Maxwell reports that Reverend Pam stated this while interacting with religious and traditional leaders of Southern Kaduna. The delegation spent several hours meeting with Southern Kaduna Elders Forum, Southern Kaduna People's Union, Sukapo, and other community development associations from the Axis. The plea to all the groups is to embrace dialogue, no matter their grievances, and find a common ground to broker peace through forgiveness, sincere reconciliation, and above all, love. The first thing is, let's stop firing of each other at this point. Let's cease the fire so that we'll be able to think well and fight on the way out. For the representatives of the people of Southern Kaduna, reconciliation is a way forward to sustainable peace in the area and beyond. We are ready to cooperate with the government so that if we do that and help the government, the government will also help us. What is the best solution is to return people back to their communities and resettle them and then go a step further by apprehending the perpetrators, leave them out and bring them to justice. As part of the peace building process in southern Kaduna, a peace summit for stakeholders is on the way. In Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, NTA News. The onus of border security, inter-border cooperation and peaceful coexistence between the government and people should not be seen as the sole responsibility of government alone, but as a duty of every patriotic citizen to participate and contribute meaningfully towards that. Your state governor, May Malabuni, stated this in Damatru while receiving his counterpart from Difa province in the neighboring Niger Republic, who came to strengthen relationship between the two states in different countries. Yunusa Suleiman reports. Nigeria and the Niger Republic are two West African neighboring countries with long-standing relationship. Difa region in Niger Republic, neighboring Yobe and Bono states, is one area that its people share common culture language and religion with social economic activities thriving between them dating back decades a long history of peaceful coexistence these antecedents informed the decision by the governor of Difa region isa laminu to lead a high level entourage on a working visit to yobe state where he met his counterpart and discussed issues bordering on security 
trade, education, and social cultural activities between the two neighbors. Governor Mema Labuni, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Baba Malonwali, presented a letter to the Governor of Difa offering free scholarship to five indigents of the area at Yobe State University. And this visit will serve as an avenue for further to cement a long cherished brother relation. Issa Laminu, however, lamented over the persistent insecurity that has crippled trading activities at the border between Yobe, Borno in Nigeria, and Tifa in Niger Republic, calling for collaboration through the Lectured Basin Commission to arrest the situation. In the Matru, Yunusa Suleiman, NTN News. Now, the lawmaker representing Katanala East State Constituency in Benue State House of Assembly, Jonathan Abwidye, has been remanded in prison over alleged criminal conspiracy and kidnapping. The lawmaker, alongside one Mr. Denning Zwemul of Kasinala Town, were accused of conspiring with other suspects now at large to snatch a Toyota Hilux van and other valuables belonging to Appin Public Health Initiatives along Katsinala to Donga Road in Katsinala local government area of Bainu State. According to police investigation, they were arrested with the said vehicle. It was further alleged that the vehicle was snatched at gunpoint by the wanted and notorious kingpin Tewase Agwaza alias Ghana, who also abducted the staff of Appin Public Health Initiatives and later collected an unspecified sum as ransom before releasing the abducted staff. The court ordered the remand of the lawmaker and Mr. Zwemero at the Makudi Correctional Center and adjourned the matter to October 12th for further mention. Tonight, we'll be looking at federal government's palliative measures to reduce the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on vulnerable Nigerians. Our guests, Group Captain Sadiq Garabashir, who retired, is still standing by to enlighten us on this, but that will be after this break and some reports from our correspondents. Stay with us. The Nigerian Army invites applications from eligible Nigerians for commission into the Nigerian Army as show service combatant and direct show service commission officers. Applicants must be Nigerian, male or female. The ages for short service combatant is between 23 and 27, while those applying for direct show service commission must be between ages 20 and 30, and medical consultant should not be more than 40 years of age by January 2021. They must be physically, mentally, and medically fit according to Nigerian Army's Standards. To apply, log on to www.recruitment.army.mil.ng. Upload a passport photograph, educational certificate, birth certificate or declaration of age and certificate of state of origin. Follow the prompt and complete the application process. Then print out an online generated photo slip or card. All applications must be completed and submitted online not later than 29th September 2020. Military Secretary, Army. Me, an answer. You need to recharge your DSTV or go TV subscription easily. But our office day fast mom. You fit to use our app to recharge or fix errors. No wahala. Or if you like one-on-one -on -one service, our Sabi men agents, full grand, then be certified field service agent. We fit help you with any big Sabi men day for you. If you want to recharge your subscription and sharply activate your account, then fit help you resolve any technical challenge or customer inquiry. How you go take no them? Now with them Sabi man jacket, branded face cap, and boxy box machine with them hold. Now so you go Sabi our Sabi men for your area. So, whether na my DSTV app, my GoTV app, or Sabi Men within your area, make sure say you continue to enjoy world-class quality entertainment anytime at your convenience. We take your side. ICPC and NTA say you can help Nigeria to flatten the curve on COVID-19, just as you can help flatten the curve on corruption. Transparency, accountability, and integrity just as you follow health guidelines. Stay home with integrity and maintain your distance from corruption just as you stay away from COVID-19 by maintaining social distance. Report every 
act of corruption to ICPC just as you report COVID-19 to NCDC. Stay away from corruption. Stay safe from COVID-19. to ICPC on toll free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Prioritizing the sustenance of vulnerable Nigerians in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic necessitated the federal government's provision of palliatives to recipients across the country. Adeola Komi Akere has an overview of how the initiative warmed the hearts of beneficiaries in Lagos. Onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, many nations of the world went into frenzy, and the option that came highly recommended was a total lockdown of all cities to prevent the spread of the virus, as its mode of transmission was primarily from person to person. Then came another source of worry for governments. Her citizens, who were observing the lockdown, find it difficult to feed their families. Workers were forced to remain at home. Many lost their jobs, as some companies that could no longer afford to pay salaries had to downsize. Now, to alleviate the effect of the lockdown, the federal government came out with measures to support the most vulnerable in the society. Yes, they had good intentions. They did their best. Provision of food items to primary one to three pupils in public primary schools was to assist parents during that crucial period. It's not easy for them to remember us that we are hungry and we are passing through a lot of uh, things this time around, this lockdown. I'm grateful data because um, if you look at it, by that very season, I did not think that God may can do such things. Uh, this thing surprised me because I did not expect it. So I really thank God for our government. We commend the efforts of the government of Nigeria the Lagos State Government to provide take home ration to these vulnerable houses so they can feed their kids. Other government economic stimulus included businesses getting assistance through the trader money, market money, and farmer money loans issued by the Bank of Industry, Bank of Agriculture, and the Nigeria Export and Import Bank. The Central Bank of Nigeria also set up measures to tackle the effect of COVID-19 to support the country's economy targeted at households and micro and small enterprises, among others. In Lagos, Adeola Komiakere, NCA News. Kaduna State Government is set to flag off the distribution of federal government's COVID-19 palliatives. The distribution will target beneficiaries who are in their need of assistance. Achari Maxwell tells us more. The government released 500 million naira for the first phase of procurement of palliatives, which targeted 72,000 households in nine local government areas of the state. As the quarantine order lasted, massive donations came in to the government from individuals, corporate organizations, and financial institutions. At the moment, Kaduna State Government has received a delivery of assorted and customized food items for onward distribution. According to the Secretary to the Kaduna State Government, who is the Chairman of the Palliative Committee, Balarebe Lawal Abbas, modalities have been worked out for effective and judicious distribution of these items to deserving individuals. We have to sit down and rely heavily on certain stakeholders, the religious leaders within the communities. We also use the, the, the counselors. We used the female groups and the youth, uh, and we created what we call uh, uh, um, uh, cells for why we are doing this, uh, this, uh, this distribution. While beneficiaries await distribution of the items, the state government says 
Strict adherence to COVID-19 safety protocols remains important. In Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Our guest tonight on Weekend File is technical advisor to the Minister on Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Group Captain Sadiq Garubashir, who retired. Thank you for joining us on Weekend File. It's a pleasure to be with you. There is no doubt that COVID-19 is indeed um, a pandemic that has uh, adversely affected the entire world. We agree with that. But what will it be your assessments of government intervention plans, you know, uh, towards mitigating the effect of the pandemic on the citizenry? Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, just like you said in your background, certainly the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has affected everybody the world over. All countries, whether rich or poor, have been affected to the level of the ravage that has been caused by the uh, COVID-19. In Nigeria, you know, we have to look at things in context. Already, unfortunately, there are some indices that were not in Nigeria's favor, even without the pandemic. For example, we must be cognizant of the level of, uh, level of uh, poverty in Nigeria, which is high. We also must uh, take cognizance with the fact that our economy was even in the doldrums, even before the COVID-19. Now, with the COVID-19, these uh, issues were exacerbated by the fact that, uh, you know, at a time the government had to make a choice whether is it people's livelihood that should be prioritized or saving people from the scourge of the disease. It was a battle, you know, that like we say livelihood versus the, the two must go hand in the hand. The two must go hand in hand. <laughs> so it is a, it's, not, it's not really easy. Mm -hmm. not only for Nigeria but for all other countries it is not easy striking a balance there is a you know the, the, the level of need we must agree far outstrips what is available to support okay. so that is why that Mr. President in his wisdom you know the first marching order he gave the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs was to prioritize the poorest and the most vulnerable it is always good to look at that. We have many poor people, but he wanted us to prioritize the poorest and the most vulnerable. The poorest of the Asia. poor. The poorest of the poor. Okay. So that is how the military set out with the cooperation of state governments, local government officials, because of course the, the, the state governments, you cannot do without them. They are nearer to the people. So for each state at a certain level, while we make sure that what the federal government are located to each state reaches the state, documented, are received, we leave it to each individual state, just like I saw the something you are showing on Kaduna State, for the individual state governments to decide, you know, as far as the palliatives are concerned. And uh, talking of the palliatives, it's also good to differentiate okay. that there were different kinds of palliatives. Right. There were the palliatives in terms of foodstuff, which was given, and then there were palliatives in terms of uh, financial stipend which were part of an ongoing program under the National Social Investment Program, which has been on 2016. But because of the pan uh, pandemic, you know, all the programs under Social Investment Program, like the uh, Conditional Cash Transfer, like the Jeep, like the N-Power, some modifications were made to take cognizance of the fact that there is even a higher level of need during the COVID-19 COVID COVID response. All right. Now that you have mentioned the issue of states, you know, getting palliatives from the ministry as instructed by the federal government. That's where the matter lies, even as we speak now, because um, uh, a lot of people, uh, rather we have these concerns uh, regarding that distribution of palliatives. Now, some people complain they never got anything. How was the distribution done across states? Why are we getting all these complaints? Okay. Uh, in answering that question, let me go at what is the source of the palliative. Now here I'm confining myself to the palliative in terms of food stuff. Good. Before we go to the palliatives in terms of financial uh, you know, stipend. There were three sources okay. of the palliatives that were given by government. First, there were some 59 trucks that were donated by the custom through the instruction of Mr. President, which comprises trucks of uh, rice, um, uh, vegetable oil, and uh, tomato paste which were seized from smugglers and the, and, the, and the president instructed the custom to donate these products to the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs to distribute. This was the first set of palliatives that was released. This next set of... Uh, they were all released to the third to the state and the FCT. I will, I will come to that. Okay. But like, this is the 59 trucks. Then the second set of palliatives is the 70 metric ton of grains, sorghum, 
millet, beans that were released again by the federal government through the federal ministry of uh, agriculture given to federal ministry of humanitarian affairs to distribute this was taken from the national grains reserve all over the country it has silos it was from there that was taken then the most recent one which as i'm talking to you now the minister of uh, humanitarian affairs was the grains which is just coming to nigeria that was donated by ECOWAS, which i saw you flashing on your on your news which was donated by ECOWAS to government which is about some uh, so four metric tons so this was uh, the three sources of this now let's take them one by one for the food i mean uh, food items gotten from uh, from the customs you know the, the the ministry arrived at a formula first we must recall there were three states initially that were considered as the frontline states for the covid they were the first states to be you know locked down this was lagos ogun and fct yes. so logically priority as of that time was given to these three states okay. in terms of the quantity that was given to the states okay. in terms of the rapidity of getting the allocation so these were the states that initially got you know these uh, allocations and then all the other states depending on the level of uh, how the covid affect them depending on the level of uh, population in the particular state okay. what i can assure you is that these uh, trucks that were given by by custom all has been handed out they were certified by uh, by uh, the, the relevant bodies as to by fit for consumption and then each state as i'm talking to you today has been given their palliative from the custom list. it was given on the receipt to the government agencies some came to carry on their own some it is the ministry that transported you know these items to them they signed and collected it so all the tax states and fct have got they have, it. they have it and those that were transported uh, there were measures of finding out whether they got to their destination exactly each at each point each state government somebody signs okay you know i have collected so much amount they drop and then they sign and then we all have right, all right uh, group captain uh, shehu retired yeah. let's pause it there and go for a break on weekend file when we return we shall continue with this discussion do stay with us because I'm a like I love Welcome to close new data plans with night browsing yes. 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 Dial star triple seven hash. Unlimited. Panadol Extra, now also available in a four tablet street at 50 naira only. Panadol Extra, now also available in a four tablet street at 50 naira only. Panadol Extra, now also available in a four tablet street at 50 naira only. She cries. She cries in anguish and in pain. She bears the scourge of her grief. She toils in vain for justice and succumbs to silence. He gloats over his malady. Like a beast, he pounces with no remorse. Her cry means nothing. Her pain feeds her shame. Like an orphan, she's left to grieve in solitude. But no more will she cry in vain. Her adversaries will henceforth bear the brunt of their cruelty. Rape is evil. Rape is a plague. A pandemic of monumental consequences. We must unite and kick it out of our society. Connect with NTA and stand against rape and rapist. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. 
It has been years of sustained federal and Boronu state government collective efforts towards food and livelihood intervention to alleviate sufferings of victims of Boko Haram insurgency, most of them in IDP's camps and host communities. Such massive food aid distribution was carried out with additional palliative to vulnerable groups in the light of challenges occasioned by the COVID-19 health crisis. Mohammed Ibrahim completes the report. The coronavirus pandemic lockdown period collapse of socio-economic activities was greeted in Borno State with an already existing humanitarian crisis occasioned by the Boko Haram insurgency with victims scattered in internally displaced persons camps and host communities across the state. <laughs> Through NEMA, the federal government's COVID-19 palliative measures provided 165 trailers of assorted food items, which the agency handed over and distributed in collaboration with the state government supervised by the state governor, Professor Babakana Omar Azulum. The aim of the palliatives was to cushion the suffering of the people during the lockdown. Uh, so the distribution started... Uh, when the palliative was on, as I'm talking to you, the distribution is still on. Benefiting communities and local government areas include internally displaced persons camps and vulnerable households living in host communities of Medugri de Bono State Capital, Engala, Ruan in Kala Balge, Bama, Pulka in Goza, Monguno, Mafa and the Kwa local government areas. We were able to target 60,000 households in NMC and Jere. When the remaining uh, uh, palliative uh, items were also distributed, including the grains, in all the locations, especially AJ headquarters that uh, uh, IDP residents are there have received a lot of assistance from the federal government. Through the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, 144 trucks of maize, sorghum and millet were received and distributed to vulnerable groups and persons. The state government also provided condiments for the foodstuff, which were also provided by NEDC using a sharing formula adopted by the COVID-19 Palliative Committee to reach beneficiaries. The breakdown of the sharing formula for the food distribution was 10% to persons with disability, 20% for the aged, 20% went to widows, while poor persons received 50%. In May degree, Mohammed Ibrahim, NTN News. The first phase of distribution of raw food items to pupils to pupils of public primary schools under the homegrown school feeding program of the federal government has been concluded with many households in Ogun State as beneficiaries. Lukman and Devasor reports that about 290 distribution centers were set up across the state to reach out to 60,391 beneficiaries targeted in the first phase of the special intervention. His report is presented in this package. The National School Feeding Program is a 70 naira per day meal for public primary school pupils across the country. At the peak of the coronavirus pandemic when all schools were shut, the federal government adopted the strategy of distributing raw food stuff and these were taken to the doorstep of the pupils on presentation of validated vouchers by parents for collection on behalf of their children. I receive rice, beans, egg, guano oil, palm oil, salt. This program was launched and flagged off by the special assistant to the president on national homegrown school feeding program, Titi Lola Adeyemi Doro, on behalf of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Ajia Umar Farouk in Ogun State in June 2020. The program has indeed impacted families. The social shocks of recent global crises, especially the COVID-19 pandemic, have led to enhanced mod modified social protection mechanism and commenced distribution of food to poorest of school children across the states, starting with the federal capital, Lagos State, and now Ogun State. We have 290 distribution centers. Uh, we have. We place it by word, but we have to thirty words, but there are some words that are so big so that they will have to distribution center. In all, we have to like say distribution centers. The second phase of the program will soon commence in Ogun State. 
Our guest is still here, a group captain Sadi Garba Shegu, retired. Let's quickly go to the issue of the monetary palliatives, which yes. are also distributed uh, probably alongside the food items as it were. Of, of course, many people still believe that never happened. Let's clear the air. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with regards to the monetary palliatives, even before the advent of the COVID-19, this government, as far back as 2016, had the National Social, uh, National Social Investment Program, under which there are three or four different kinds of program. There was the Empower, which is targeted at young people, graduates and non-graduates who are looking for work. There was the uh, GIP, that is the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, which uh, is money for market women. You have, uh, uh, you know, where money, trader money, market money, farmer money is given to them. And then you also have the Homegrown School Feeding Program, which is a, you know, a program which used to give children prepared cooked food while they are in school. We also have the conditional cash transfer. Uh, primary one to three. Primary one to three. Okay. Primary one to three. All right. And then there was the conditional cash transfer, which is a stipend that government has a register, National Social Investment Register, which using indices in collaboration with local government officials. In fact, sometimes we go down as much as to meet the local local authorities. Who among you? Because level poverty, they, 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 you know, differs. This Even right, though we can yeah. say, we agree that many Nigerians are, are poor, but like I said, the resources are not there. We go to a certain uh, community, you ask the community leaders, among yourselves, which family do you think are the poorest there? So that is to say we have at, at, at that level, at that level. able yes. to tell so, you who Yes, are. these people were put in the register and then the government was paying them a stipend of 5,000, uh, you know, every month. You will be surprised, you know, at the level of excitement that people do. So it is under these programs that were going on even before the COVID. Now, when the COVID came, there was need to modify some of these programs because also the level of demand people are, can no longer go out to earn their living. So uh, the, the Mr. President in his magnanimity instructed all these programs now are under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. He instructed the minister that uh, for the period of COVID to alleviate suffering, like for the conditional cash transfer, for example, why people were paid 5,000. Five, 5, yeah. It used to be two months, they will give you 10,000. So he said for, for the COVID-19, looking at the lockdown that is looming, give everybody 20,000, 20,000, that is for four months. Okay. So people were reached all over the states. We did this uh, uh, conditional cash transfer. 20,000 naira was given to each beneficiary. All right, the time that will not really yes. permit us to yes. go into full details. Okay. Finally, yeah, mm. finally, yeah, mm. just in very few words, mm. will these palliatives continue or is it just a one off just for the period? Well, like I told you, even before the COVID, this is part of the federal government program. Okay. So, yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on Weekend File tonight. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with uh, Group Captain Sadiq Garabashir, retired, the technical advisor to the Minister on Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management. Let's bring you sports updates now.